Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Karen. Today we're in the control signal classroom because in today's video we are going to be talking about signal conditioning in industrial control applications. Now before we go any further, let's clarify for our audience, I don't think we're talking about hair conditioning, right? Um, no. Oh. In the world of electronics, signal conditioning simply means the manipulation of a signal, which is most commonly analog, so that it can be used in the next stage of the process. That manipulation typically falls into one of four different categories. Isolation, conversion, amplification, and splitting. Ooh, so manipulation, isolation, and splitting really sounds like my last relationship. Before my marriage, of course. Hi, honey. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Zach, but we're not here to talk about emotional manipulation. We're here to talk about electrical manipulation. It still sounds like my ex. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do you need some time? Nah, I think I'm all right. Okay, then. From a product perspective, panel builders could use individual devices to address each of these functions, or they could be addressed with a single product like this programmable analog signal conditioner. For now though, let's focus on those four primary categories I just mentioned. First, let's talk about isolation. Signal isolation comes into play when you want to protect sensitive and expensive equipment, like your controller or I.O. card, from electrical hazards. These hazards may originate from a field device, like a sensor or a transmitter. In that scenario, the signal conditioner simply isolates the field signal from the controller, offering a degree of protection. Signal isolators filter out electrical noise that may get coupled onto an analog signal. This filtering allows a cleaner signal to be read by the controller, which ensures a higher degree of accuracy in your application or process. Likewise, signal isolators can also filter electrostatic interference that can be caused from ground loops. Ground loops can also degrade the accuracy of your signal you're trying to measure, and even worse, cause damage to the devices they interact with. So you can see why isolation is important. Another category of signal conditioning is conversion. As the name suggests, conversion refers to taking one type of signal and changing it to something else. So why would you need to convert a signal in the first place? Well, let me give you an example. Let's assume you have a sensor in the field measuring temperature. And that sensor you're using is an RTD. For those unfamiliar, RTD stands for Resistance Temperature Detector. It's basically a highly sensitive thermometer used in industrial applications. In this scenario, let's also say that the PLC you're using does not have the ability to read RTD output signals, but you need to get that info into the PLC. So you need something that can interpret the RTD signal and convert it into something that the PLC can understand. In many cases, this would end up being a very commonly used 4 to 20 milliamp signal that just about every PLC can read. A signal conditioner of course, would be the perfect device to perform that conversion from the RTD output to the 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And for all of you out there wondering about 4 to 20 milliamp signals and why they're used, be sure to subscribe so that you're notified when we release that upcoming video. Now back to this video. Converting an RTD to 4 to 20 milliamps is a very common example, but there are several different types of signal converters available with varying degrees of functionality and complexity. So it's important to select the correct converter that will best fit your needs based on the specific application. Regardless though, the primary purpose of converting an original signal type to something else remains the same. Next, let's talk about signal amplifiers. Amplification has two main purposes. The first is to increase the resolution of an input signal. This allows you to more accurately monitor devices, instruments, and sensors in the field. Another important function that amplifiers perform is increasing the signal-to-noise ratio. This will enable you to more easily receive the necessary data from your sensors or transmitters, while reducing disturbances in your signal due to noise. Again, this would provide much more consistent and reliable performance from the device. And finally, let's talk about signal splitters. As the name suggests, signal splitters divide the signal and allow one signal to go multiple places. For those old enough, think about when your internet in your home wasn't all wireless. Oh yeah, I remember that. You'd pick up the phone and the tone would be like, beep boop beep beep bop, Oh, 
Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> not do that again. The main internet connection would come into the router, and that signal was then split off as ethernet cable runs into different computers in various rooms of the house. Yeah, so that's essentially the same thing we're talking about here. However, instead of it being an ethernet signal, we're dealing with an analog signal. And instead of different home computers, the two analog signals would likely be split to two different controllers, such as a local PLC and a remote PLC. So there you have it, the basic functions of signal conditioning, isolation, conversion, amplification, and splitting. Of course, there are plenty of nuances and details that go into the world of signal conditioning and make it much more complex. However, at their core will be one of the four main functions we just covered. That said, when it comes time to select a specific signal conditioner, you can always reach out to Phoenix Contact's technical support team or any of our nationwide authorized distributors for help. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please give us a positive signal with a big thumbs up before you leave. And be sure to subscribe so you get all our new videos as they're released. See you next time. See you next time.